friends, today we're going to compare the tried and true Glock 45 MOS to the all brand spanking new Springfield Echelon. A little background on the Echelon for those that might not be familiar. The Echelon is a brand new full size handgun made by HS Products and imported under Springfield Armory. Sometimes comparing a gun side by side with a more familiar product gives us a sense of size and styling differences. I chose the Glock 45 because of one major reason, I don't own a Glock 17 anymore. Though the Glock 45 and Echelon differ slightly in dimensions, this won't be a point of comparison. For this comparison, both models are fitted with optics and both fitted with the Surefire X300 on the pick rail. We're gonna cover five different talking and comparison points. Aesthetics and ergonomics, features and technology, performance, aftermarket options, and of course, price. Let's begin. Let's start with aesthetics and ergonomics. Both the Echelon and G45 have very similar grip angles. The G45 is slightly more aggressive, however the Echelon isn't too far behind. Both feature interchangeable back straps. However, now we're gonna talk about some differences. Starting up front, the G45 and Echelon both have pick rails for mounting lights on the frame. However, the G45 only has one slot while the Echelon has a four slot pick rail. The G45 has vertical serrations on the front and rear sides of the slide while the Echelon features forward canted serrations wrapping the front and rear sides of the slide, including the top. The Echelon also features trench cuts in front of the chamber and the rear of the slide to make press checking easier, so you don't have to pinch your fingers. Regarding styling and ergonomic features, the Echelon wins this category. Echelon 1, Glock 0. Next category, features and technology. Both competitors use optic mounting systems, however there are drastic differences in the technology behind each platform. Let's start with the tried and true Glock MOS. The MOS stands for Modular Optic System. You can pretty much fit any optic you want on an MOS providing you have the appropriate adapter plates. When I purchased the G45, it came with several different aluminum plates to adapt my optics. There's also a bunch of aftermarket companies making quality plates. Let's jump to the Echelon. It will take up to 30 different optics which can be directly mounted to the slide. This is the new VIS. The VIS stands for Variable Interface System. In a nutshell, you can directly mount up to 30 different optics to the slide by simply arranging pins to accommodate the optic without the need for any adapter plates. The G45 also uses a standard handgun frame while the Echelon uses a grip module slash chassis system. This system is called the COG. Spelled out, it stands for Central Operating Group. Think P320, P365, Staccato, yada yada. The COG is a serialized part of the gun, enabling the aftermarket manufacturers to go nuts on sweet new grip modules. Icarus and Mischief Machine, I'm looking at you, start working. The technology and features category is won by the Echelon hands down. No optic plates, aftermarket grip modules, nice. Echelon 2, Glock 0. Now, let's talk performance. In all honesty, the G45 and Echelon seem to perform nearly identical. They both equally shoot well, and I pretty much shot them equally as well. Neither the G45 or Echelon have had any malfunctions. All this said, my G45 has a round count and simply just guesstimating somewhere in the 2500 round range, where my Echelon has had about 700 rounds down the pipe while I'm writing this. Since both of these guns perform the same with zero malfunctions, this round is a tie. Echelon 3, Glock 1. Now it's time to talk about aftermarket options. The Glock has been around for a long time. That means it's had decades of aftermarket exposure while the Echelon has while the Echelon has only been out for about a week while I'm writing this article. There are tons of companies that make aftermarket slides, barrels, magwells, mag extensions, large magazines, slide catch levers, and the list really goes on and on. I feel the aftermarket makers have probably really spooled up their brains and have started developing some cool projects for the Echelon. Unfortunately, due to its young exposure, we aren't there yet, yet. 
Glock wins the aftermarket category. However, I feel this section of my video and article won't age very well. Echelon 3, Glock 2. It's time to talk turkey, and by turkey, I mean price. Let's start with the MSRP. The Echelon has an MSRP of 679. The G45 has an MSRP of, you guessed it, 679. Since the Glock has been around longer, I've recently seen some killer deals. Some of these deals, you can actually find a G45 for under 550. Make sure to check out some of my links below to find these deals for yourself. Due to the economics and science, the G45 can be had for cheaper, though they both carry the same MSRP. Glock wins here for now. Echelon 3, Glock 3. That's it. In my opinion, the Echelon has superior technology and features. However, due to the tried and true nature of the G45, we're currently looking at more aftermarket options and cheaper prices for the G45. Though again, I feel this won't be the case in a few months. If I had to pick right now between the Echelon and the G45, though I'm blessed to own one of each right now, I think I'd have to go with the Echelon, simply because I am absolutely attracted to that COG and VIS system. It shoots just as well as my G45. However, I feel like in the future, the aftermarket options are gonna be really cool, especially when you're talking about companies like Mischief Machine and Icarus Precision. They make some sweet grip modules for the SIG P320 and P365 series. I can only imagine how cool it'll be when one of those guys makes a grip module for the Echelon, and I am waiting for that. Thank you all so much. Hope you all enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>